Hi, I'm Bob Tabor with LearnVisualStudio.net. In this lesson, we'll talk about jQuery selectors. A jQuery selector allows you to grab one or more DOM elements using a cascading style sheet syntax. Remember from a couple of videos ago, we are defining the context by passing uh, CSS selectors into the jQuery function so that we can then work with the collection of elements that we've selected, all right? But as you'll see, jQuery goes beyond what you might typically see in CSS giving you the power to get creative with how you select and navigate through the DOM. Now, as with most topics related to jQuery and JavaScript, there's so much material that it would be impossible to cover it all and fit it into a single video. So, I'm merely going to show you about a dozen examples and then I'm going to point you to jQuery's own comprehensive list on their own uh, API documentation website so you can experiment from there. All right, so let's go ahead and set up this example. Uh, make sure that you have the code uh, that I have included with this video. You should be able to download it from wherever you downloaded this video or uh, wherever you're currently streaming it. But I'm looking at a file called c9js underscore 15.html. Uh, it is a simple HTML file. Let's just walk through some of its features. First of all, a couple of scripts. The first external script refers to the uh, Microsoft CDN version of the jQuery uh, uh, library file. And then the second script file refers to the script15.js. Currently, it is empty, but we'll start adding things to it uh, in just a moment. And then finally, we have a link to an external style sheet, style15.css. We open that up. You can see that I've merely defined a style for a class named highlight. And so we're going to apply this highlight class uh, to the different selections that we make. So it stands out and we can see which selections were made based on the selectors we passed into the jQuery function. All right. So uh, if we take a look at the body of the document itself, we have an H1, a header with the word JavaScript example, a couple of paragraphs, each with different IDs, first, second, third. I added a name attribute to the second paragraph just so we can look at how we can select uh, uh, DOM elements using attributes. In this case, we'll just use the name attribute. And then I add an unordered list with a simple uh, set of six list items. A couple of those list items will have a class that I've applied called chosen. In fact, you can see this chosen class appears throughout the document a couple of times. And then at the very end, I've added this empty paragraph, and I'll show you uh, how we'll use that uh, using some special selectors that have been added uh, to jQuery. All right. So let's go ahead and just minimize that for the moment and open up our script file. Our first order of business is to make sure that we can, we've got uh, our script file wired up correctly. And so I'm merely going to create a little alert just to let me know that everybody uh, that my HTML file can see my script file. So when I open this up, I immediately get our high alert box. So we're in good shape there. I'm going to delete this out now that I know that everything's wired up correctly. And so let's go ahead and start selecting uh, like we did in, previous, in the previous video where we started selecting by ID. So here, just to get warmed up and remind you, we're just going to select the DOM element that has the ID of first. We're going to add a class to it. And we'll add that class that we created in our CSS file highlight. So let's save that and now open this up. And you can see that we've applied that highlight class, which merely adds a background color of yellow to this DOM element. Awesome. And then let's go ahead and select uh, by element. Uh, and so here we're going to do just all paragraphs. comment this one out. So now we're going to select all paragraphs in the document and highlight them. All right. And that seems to work. Great. And then the last easy one we'll do is we'll choose by class. And so we have that chosen class that I've applied to several different list items and a paragraph or a span, I forget which we'll find out here in a second. Okay, there we go. 
All right, so now let's take a look uh, at some slightly more advanced cases. Uh, for example, this is just CSS, so we should be able to use anything we can use in CSS, right? So let's go the first paragraph and combine it with chosen. using a comma operator. And so you can see we have the first paragraph in our selection and then also any elements that have the chosen uh, class. All right, so we can create, I guess you call them combinations. All right, so let's go ahead now and move on to some other cases. And um, let's do a contains. So in this case, let's go, let's look for any list item that contains the word three in its text. All right, and so since we found the word three inside of the text of this list item, we use that as our context to add our class to. Awesome. Let's look at uh, next and previous so we can navigate through the DOM after we find a given element. So let's start off with what we did here. I'm just going to copy this and then paste it. In fact, I'm going to do something again here in just a moment. So uh, let's go ahead and paste it again since I have it on my clipboard and I'll just get ready for that. And this time we've already selected the item three, but I wanna to navigate to the previous and the next list item using dot next. So now it's selected three, but then we said we'll find the next DOM element and it changed the context to four. Awesome. Or we can do previous, which is just P-R-E-V. And let's see this in action. All right, so we start by selecting two and then we use the previous method, which changes the context to the previous list item. Awesome. Let's go ahead and comment that out. And now let's take a look at uh, working with siblings. So uh, here, let's go uh, both siblings and parent. All right, so let's just start here and go siblings and uncomment it out. And let's save that and now take a look. So we started off with item containing the text three, but then we said, select all of its siblings. So it no longer is selected, but all of the other list items in the unordered list. Awesome. And then let's just do a parent as well here. And I'm not sure we're gonna get the results that we're looking for. Let's see if we get what we get. Okay, well, yeah, it does. It selects the entire unordered list. All right, that's why every one of the individual items are selected because it is selecting the parent, which is the unordered list tag, which then selects this entire area, right? Very cool. Okay, let's move on. We can also get at individual children of items. So let's take a look at, uh, let's do this. So we're looking for any list items, any list items in any list, ordered, unordered, whatever the case might be, that are the first child in that list and add the class highlight. And so you might think, well, is this zero based or one based? It's one based, meaning that it's the first child, the second child, third child. If you try to use zero here, then it's not gonna catch anything because there's never a zeroth item, <laughs> okay? just it's a little uh, different than what you might expect when working with arrays, zero based arrays, okay? So let's see if we've uh, done this correctly. Any list item that is the first list item of its parent, and we can see obviously we have uh, our list item that has the text one in it, great. 
All right, let's move on to selecting by attributes. And you recall that I added a paragraph that had a name attribute in it. Uh, so we're looking for all paragraphs, and then we're going to use this opening and close square brace, and we'll set a little equation in here where name equals my second para, because we are looking for this individual item right here, where the second, where the name attribute is set to my second para. But we could use this on an anchor tag with hrefs or anything. All right, and then let's add a class to that. open it up and it found our second paragraph awesome okay and then let's use this kind of as our starting point and this time what I want to simply do is add the exclamation mark before the equal sign so in this case we're testing for equality where name is equal to and now we're looking for where name is not equal to my second para let's see what that gives us back okay so it's giving us all paragraphs that do not have an attribute named my second para, okay? So it gives us everything except the paragraph that has the text second paragraph in it. Very cool. All right, and there's another way to kind of accomplish the same thing. Um, and this will give us an insight to some ways that we can start using a little more jQuery and less CSS. And so I'm going to use the not method. And so what we're saying is give me all paragraph items, but not those that have a name attribute, any name attribute associated with it. All right, and we get the same results as last time because it's essentially, these two are exactly the same. It's just in this case, we've invoked jQuery's not method. Okay, all right. And there are some other jQuery specific uh, selector syntax that we can use. Uh, like there's this header syntax. And so it will select anything that is an H1 and H2 and H3 and so on. All right, all the way down to H6. And so we have one, a single H1 in our document. Let's see if it finds it. And it does, the H1 at the very top, very cool. And then in a similar manner, it has this uh, selector that will allow you to find all uh, empty items. So we're looking for any paragraphs that are empty. And we, you'll recall that uh, we have one item that's empty at the very bottom of the document, has no text or anything inside of it, and so that's the one we're targeting here. And so uh, I'm just going to type in, you seemed lonely, so I gave you some text. Okay, uh, let's see if that works. All right, and so I'm able to dynamically add in uh, some text, I could style it up any way I wanted to just by looking for those elements that are have no children, all right? So as you can see, there's a lot of different ways that we can go about this. Now let me take a moment here and point you to the documentation. So the best place to get started with the documentation is just api.jquery.com. And uh, if you take a look at this, what we wanna look at are the selectors. So look on the navigation on the left-hand side and find the word selectors. It'll go to api.jquery.com slash category slash selectors. And so you can see a full list of all selectors. And for example, we looked at this uh, empty selector. Uh, we looked at the, uh, the header selector. Uh, clearly other CSS ones like the ID selector which we started with here are uh, all like form elements that are inputs all items that have been hidden on the page um, uh, let's see first first child uh, and so on I mean there are just so many to choose from there are evens and odds let me show you that one real quick I think I forgot I wanted to show you that uh, and that's why one of the reasons why I use the ULs 
Uh, so let's just go right back up here and do um, any uh, li even. I think that's the right syntax. We'll find out here in a minute. Add class, highlight. And I'll go ahead and get rid of everything else. I think that's good. So with any luck. Yeah, so it does, in this case, it adds um, to all items that are even. And I think that's going to be a zero-based operation. And then we'll choose all odd items, which would give us the opposite of that. Okay, cool. All right, so as you can see, jQuery, extremely powerful. It's really fun. And it's not really scary at all, right? At least the selection part. Uh, I really enjoy working with it. It just works so intuitively and I feel very productive very quickly. So uh, I strongly endorse just getting in and playing and say, I wonder if I can do this and then looking through the API and say, ooh, that's, that might get me close to where I wanna be and you can experiment with it. And I just create little exercises for myself, some deliberate practice uh, to force myself uh, for an hour or two to, to really understand what it's doing. All right, so in the next lesson, we're gonna be pushing jQuery even further and we'll see you there, thank you. Thank mm -hmm. you.